Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I've been doing a lot of casting lately, and it seems like every job requires a different flask. Most of my flasks are fixed, but this one is hinged. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a casting flask of your own. The cope and drag will only be three inches deep, and I'm ripping them out of half-inch plywood. I'm going to put some tapered grippers on the inside so that the mold should stay together better when it's lifted. These are only one inch wide and tapered at 30 degrees. And here's my starting cut. Cut, flip, repeat. Then I cut them to length on the miter saw. I'm going to glue them up like so, right down the middle of each piece. And this jointed tree trunk will provide the clamping pressure while I walk away. Now, I'm making the keys that will align the cope and drag. I don't know why they're called that. Top and bottom is universally understood. I'm tapering them 10 degrees so that they go together easily. And I'm making them different sizes so they can't go any other way. Now, I'm only gluing the wider half of each key so that they don't get stuck. And make sure that they're parallel to the top edge. And now wait and wait. Now I'm only gluing opposite corners together because it should only need to hinge from one edge. And I'll square it up very quickly. I'm doing the top and bottom together to make sure that they stay aligned. Then add clamps and more weighting. Now, one of the unglued corners gets hinges, top and bottom. Ah, the key interferes with this one sitting flush. So I'll simply cut a slot in the edge of the key. Aha! Perfect so far. Now, I just need an indexing and latching system on this open corner. I'm going to keep it simple and use screws, for now at least. Now I'm enlarging the hole so that the screw barely bites. I just want it to work as an indexing pin and use only the tip threads. I'm going to intentionally strip the upper portion of the hole, actually. Ah, that works quite well. Maybe a latch eventually if I get tired of screwing and unscrewing. Then a panel to temporarily contain the sand whilst I pick it, pack it, and transport it. I've attached a temporary panel, and now I'm packing it for testing. The sand easily flows around my angled grippers. Oops. Ah, my corner got caught. I didn't account for the hinge radius on this corner. It hinges like this, and so I have to trim off my grip strip right here where it will intersect the mold. It's quick work with a hammer and chisel. And I'll repack this corner really fast. Perfect. And the flask releases quite nicely. Here's my shortened grip groove and the end ones. Well, that's it. It'll work. Well, it's much more complicated than the fixed flasks that I have made so far, but now I'll be able to use one flask to make several molds and then pour them all at once, so that'll be nice. And I'll make a deeper hinged flask soon, using the same techniques. But you can definitely do this yourself, just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.